And just a few minutes ago, you saw how more and more people are keeping bees in the Treasure Valley. And with bees come stings, 30 each year for the man I talked to. So now we're talking with Dr. Bill Palmer, who's an allergist. Thanks for being with us this oh, morning. You're Glad to have you here on the show. And we want to talk about what dangers, what risks, if any, people might be facing if they decide to take up that hobby for beekeeping. So first of all, do you see a lot of, a lot of beekeepers that come in? Are, do a lot of them have issues with allergies to bee stings? You know, we do see a couple of beekeepers who come and see us. Um, they are much more likely than the general population to be stung, as the gentleman said. He, he's mm -hmm. been stung on average 30 times a year. And that's pretty typical, whereas most of us are not stung at all and does in that, a given year. So does that also mean that they're more prone to have allergies to those stings? It does. Just by nature of them being stung more, they're much more likely to become allergic to the bee stings. So you actually, I guess, gain an allergy over time as with more exposure to something? You can. More exposure increases the likelihood that you will become allergic. Interesting. So just keep that in mind when you do it. So with that said then, are there shots or any type of relief for them? You know, you get allergy shots for certain other pollen things. Can you do anything for a bee sting that can provide relief if you know you're going to be keeping the insects? If you have significant allergy to bee stings, the first thing you should always have is ep epinephrine. It's an auto-injector, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes called EpiPen. Yeah. Just basically the antidote if you have a significant reaction, what's called anaphylaxis, to a bee sting. But in addition to that, uh, there's a, a very good effective treatment option. In fact, it's 98% effective. Oh, wow. So it's basically, as you described, um, immunotherapy or allergy shots to the venom. And what you do is you get injected regularly with the venom, initially at a very small dose, and then each time you come in, you get a slightly higher dose. Increases, okay. And what that does is it makes you more uh, tolerant or it desensitizes you to the venom so that if you happen to be stung out in the real world, you will probably no longer react. And so a very good treatment option for not just beekeepers, but anyone who has venom allergy, including allergy to wasps or yellow jackets. Interesting. Good to know. And so even if you don't like shots, I imagine the shots would feel better than the actual bee stings themselves, it, right? Exactly. Since you put them into a syringe instead of a, a stinger exactly. <laughs> on your arm. Exactly. Now, one other thing I want to talk about, the other side of the allergy uh, spectrum here, we talk about bee stings, but then there's also honey. I don't know if people, if you have a honey allergy out there, but I've heard talk of people say, well, if you eat local honey, it helps with your pollen allergies because you're ingesting so much of that pollen. Is there any truth to that? Unfortunately, no. There, there are many good reasons to consume local honey, but prevention or treatment of allergies is not one of them. So what, what's the flaw in the principle there? So as you mentioned, uh, there's a very valid treatment for environmental allergies called allergy shots, where you're actually injected with the things you're allergic to. And similar to what we just talked about with venom, if you're injected over and over again to the pollens or the animal dander that you're allergic to, we can make those patients less allergic. And so you would think the same principle would apply yeah, with the local honey. When you're eating it. But the problem is the pollens that are in the honey are not the pollens that cause allergy symptoms. Okay. So basically, the pollens that cause allergy symptoms are things like grass pollen or non-flowering trees like oak and cottonwood or common weeds like tumbleweed or sagebrush those pollens are not the pollens that bees use. So the pollens that bees use are flowers, and those are not the pollens that cause allergies in humans. So the, the idea is kind of sound, but the flaw is that it's completely different plants right, that different they're coming pollens. from. And in, in fact, it has been studied. There's a, a classic study from about 12 years ago in the Annals of Allergy that looked at whether local honey can treat allergies, and unfortunately, the, the answer in that study was it does not work. All right. Well, it's good information to know then so that uh, we realize it's maybe just a little bit of a myth out there, but you can also stop by the Boise Valley Asthma and Allergy Clinic. If you have any questions or maybe you want to seek some treatment and you guys can get them started for bee sting allergies or whatever else it may be, right? Absolutely. Thanks so much for being in here with oh, us this morning, Dr. Palmer.